So I decided to do a spring renovation, which I seeded in the middle of May, about a week later had some germination. And I hinted in those video, in that video and subsequent videos that there are some serious challenges with spring renovations. And one of them I was really worried about was heat. Now normally here in the Pacific Northwest, we don't have high temperatures above 90 very often. Maybe 10 days out of the whole year it gets above 90 degrees. It's even less likely that it gets above 100. But we had some record breaking temperatures that I was not anticipating that did some damage. And today I'm kind of going to go over what I think I'm going to try and do to correct it. And I guess we're just going to have to see if it works. So that video I did last week where I uh, did some patching of the bare spots, at the very end of the video, I had mentioned it was about, I think it was about 106 degrees that day. It was going to match our all time record high. And uh, well, that record got broken. The very next day, it got to, uh, I believe it was 109, 110 degrees. A uh, little bit of humidity, not too terrible. The day after that, was the was the one that just really did in the front yard uh, it was 113 degrees at the at the peak of the day um, i believe by like 8 a.m it was already nine, 90 degrees so what i did considering that the the renovation was still new well, it's about what six seven weeks old since it germinated was obviously the saving grace was going to be water so I, I proceeded to water it knowing that weather was coming um, about a half inch every morning before sunrise and so just about as you know five o'clock as the sun starts to come up it was done it had a, a half inch of water and then what i would do in the afternoons as it would hit 90 degrees um, anywhere from noon to eight o'clock uh, about every two hours i would run the sprinklers from three to ten minutes just you know i'd go out and i'd look at the grass and if it looked like it was really stressing, I'd run it for 10 minutes. If it didn't look too bad, I'd run it for three. Just enough to kind of cool the soil temperatures off. Now with that hot weather event, the other thing that happened was um, if you go into like Greencast and you look at the history of your area and your soil temperatures, the soil temperatures here have never been above 85 degrees, ever. It just doesn't happen here. We don't get that hot. So. Now, that day was 113, I went and looked, and the soil temperature was 98 degrees. That made me a little nervous. I was worried about not only the, the grass, but uh, one thing I really haven't touched in video as much is I planted some dahlias this year. And I know they like the warmer weather, but that's kind of extreme. Fortunately, where I planted them on the east side of the house, they get that afternoon shade, which really helped. Um, they suffered a little damage, not too much. The lawn, however, did not do very well at all. Um, there are a couple different areas where it appeared it was from uh, walking on it. It looks like it was, you know, shaped like footprints. And one thing I did, knowing that that heat was coming and I would not want to be walking on the grass or um, anything like that, was like a day or two prior, I went out and I mowed it. I just I went out and I cut it and didn't think it was hot enough to really have an effect. Well, the first spots that started showing up in the heat were foot-shaped prints. And I thought, well, that's not good. i am just water them a little bit more. Um, but then it just proceeded to get worse. Now I have three different spots, uh, one right along the driveway. That's where it initially showed up, like looking like footprints. Then there's another uh, location out in the middle that you can see just kind of like, literally you can tell the direction I walked. Um, and then there's the back side of the house where um, we took a lot of topsoil off when I regraded it. I mean, a lot. Uh, we probably cut that down three or four inches. So what I think the repercussion of that was is we removed a lot of the stuff that was uh, not as compact. Um, also removed a lot of the nutrients. And then I had that washout the day it germinated. And it just, it really struggled. It really, really struggled. So fast forward a few days, I'm, I'm stressing about what to do, how to approach it. Um, I reached out to several people, um, Christian from SoCal on an order. He deals with that kind of heat all the time. Um, I reached out to John Perry. Um, I've, I've watched some videos on, um, 
how to help loosen that compaction. Uh, Jeremy, the greener lawn, likes to use baby shampoo. Um, Christian suggested the same thing. So what I decided to do is I did go out and buy some baby shampoo and because uh, I had kind of a feeling that the one area on the back side of the house is pretty hydrophobic because we scrape so much everything off and um, I went ahead and did that and I put I had about three ounces of shampoo per thousand square feet in a, in a dial and spray and I went I just did the whole yard it's not gonna hurt anything um, figured if anything it's just gonna help some water flow and uh, get a little air in there and help it a little bit it, it really won't hurt anything um, so I did that the first day hoping that it would recover um, I let that sit for a day and then I proceeded to uh, hit it really really hard with uh, some bio stems and a, and a little bit of fertilizer I was already due for um, the 42 day post germination uh, application of green punch anyways so what I ended up doing was I ended up putting down um, nine ounces per thousand of aerate. I put down nine ounces per thousand of humic 12. I did a, an ounce per thousand of the seek or CK, uh, eight ounces per thousand of microgreen, six ounces per thousand of RGS. And then I, I hit it kind of hard with the 1801 green punch at 24 ounces per thousand. I mixed all that up into one backpack sprayer. Um, went out and proceeded to spray it and then the spots that were really bad I kind of you know an extra uh, spray over it and um, that kind of left the residual effect I can tell you right now don't mix all that stuff together <laughs> in one container um, once I added the the green punch it kind of got a little a little gummed up not too bad it probably would have been better if I could have diluted it with more water but that was quite a bit of material in one backpack sprayer. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Um, but it did work. I did get it all out. The other thing I thought it could be, um, the way some of it in one spot up by the driveway appeared to be spreading. And if it's footprints, it's not just going to spread. So I started thinking maybe it's fungus. Uh, looking at it really close, I started thinking, well, it looks a little bit like red thread, um, which is not uncommon, you know, and as much as I watered it, it's very possible so um, yesterday I went out and I did have some uh, propiconazole 14.3 concentrate um, but I didn't have enough I didn't have enough to do the entire front yard so I went and picked up some of the uh, bio advanced um, hose in sprayer propiconazole and I put that over everything I figured it's not going to hurt anything to put it out there um, our temperatures have come down humidity's kind of come up um, I'm back to a normal watering schedule of, you know, two, maybe three times a week, just half inch of water a day, um, those two or three days a week. Uh, really, I don't even need three now. We're back to almost normal temperatures. But um, put that out yesterday. Within a few hours, I could see a little bit of a difference. Um, I think that might have been part of it. I, I honestly think I've got a combination of all kinds of things going on, and that combination is just adding up to detriment. Um, I'm sure some of you are going to go, well, why didn't you just let it ride and reseed it? Well, I used that GCI uh, perennial ryegrass, and unfortunately, uh, after reaching out to Pete, he just doesn't have any more right now. doesn't know when he's going to get it, so I kind of have to just use what I got. Now, some of those other bare spots I did use, uh, some of the uh, my soil, uh, premium double dark green seed, and that's perennial ryegrass and a little bit of Kentucky bluegrass mixed in it and ultimately I want to put Kentucky bluegrass out in the front yard too um, I just wasn't going to do it right away but I didn't really let that germinate that Kentucky bluegrass germinate and that whole thing I literally just let that pre-soak and pre-germinate for like three days there's no way that Kentucky bluegrass came up that fast and then with the heat it probably not going to come up at all um, some of the spots the damage was those patch areas and they died, just died off just did not have time to seed you know they had, they had germinated oh just a few days prior and to get that kind of heat it just smoked them so I'm probably gonna have to fix those um, you know I really just don't know what else I can do at this point um, water like normal mow it like normal um, and just kind of hope for the best this is one of the things that you know in my previous video where I talked about spring renovation woes 
Um, if you didn't see that, I'll leave a link to it up here. Um, but one of the things I mentioned was, you know, this is the downside of doing spring renovations, the heat. Um, I wasn't anticipating record-breaking heat, but this is why, you know, we don't do this. We, If your cool season lawns should be renovated in the fall. However, the, with the Poetry Vialis, I had that stuff almost impossible to kill in the fall. You want to do it in the uh, late winter, early spring, when it's actively growing, and I don't see any of that out there. I haven't seen any of it come back, and hopefully it won't. So, and my end goal is going to be to put a pre-emergent out here um, come about the end of August, first part of September, just as temperatures start to come down, and hopefully keep that stuff at bay. But if I'm going to have to do some seeding fixing, then I'm going to have to do some spot seeding fixing. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you guys have any suggestions on what I could do um, or what I should do or what I could look at. I mean, I'm not very good at identifying fungus. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it's not a fungus. Um, but it's the downside of doing this stuff in the springtime and rolling into summer. Not to mention the crabgrass just... Man, initially I thought it was one isolated spot. It's, it's freaking everywhere. Um, I did go out and spray that this morning. Hopefully that doesn't put too much stress on the turf also. I think it'll be fine. Um, I didn't go really crazy. Uh, I ended up using the, the Bio Advance uh, with some Quinclorac in it. And uh, a little bit of the Ortho uh, herbicide, uh, just because there's quite a bit of clover out here also. Let's mix those two together, and I've done that in the past. Um, if you want to see details on how to do that, the video's up here. I'll leave a link in the description below airplanes all right planes gone so now if you guys have any ideas if you've dealt with this before I think I just need to be patient but it, it, it's the spots that look damaged there is still some green in there it's not completely dead except the one or two little isolated areas that uh, I did that patchwork um, but the stuff that was originally seeded it's still some green in there it's probably gonna be thin oh let me know uh, Leave a comment down below. Um, reach out to me on Instagram if you want, or uh, Facebook, whatever. I'm just not sure what exactly to do. I'll be honest with you. I think I just need to be patient and let it ride. You know, have you ever dealt with anything like this before? Have you have you had these kind of heat-related damage where it's kind of a newer lawn, so um, you just kind of have to be very careful about what you do? Uh, just let me know uh, what you did, what you found may have worked. I mean, the backyard here, completely un unscathed, and I did the same watering. Um, but it's more established, so I think that's that was the big part of the problem, was uh, trying to do a spring renovation. But anyway, we'll see you in the next one.